Okay, it's Boots Owen here. I'm working on this oil boiler. It's a Grant 5090 and it hasn't been serviced in a long time. It was fitted in 1998, so it's 19 years ago. I suspect it hasn't been serviced in about 10 years. But as a quick look around inside, it's got the left hand side panel off. So up here is the thermostat. And if I recall, this just slides in and out. The thermostat's in behind a little copper pipe there. That just sits in on this one, it's a bit, bit shaky. This is the burner unit down here. This is the thing that burns the oil and throws the heat through this hole into the heat exchanger, which is a set of pipes and whatnot inside that metal, the metal box there. And you can just see that stainless steel chimney coming up on the top. This thing here is a tiger loop. And instead of having a flow or an oil pipe coming to the boiler from the oil tank, and then another pipe returning any extra oil, this just puts it into this little bottle here and then takes it from that first uh, rather than having a pipe going to and from the oil tank. So where did I start off today? Well I took off this nut here to get in to get this whole unit off and that's only held on with one one nut and it should have a cover but that isn't fitted so there should be a, a, a aluminium shroud over the back of it but that isn't fitted for some reason and then in here I lie this back gently that's where the oil shoots under pressure into the jet and those two things on the back they're springs and that's where the electrode joins up with the HT coil which is somewhere in all of this I presume in that grey box there really so I'll just put that back there for a moment that's the oil pump that's the fan motor and the coils in there so this is a big fan housing here so there's a lot of blades in there to blow air from the damper on this side the air gets sucked in through the fan and in through here to where i just showed you a minute ago where the jet goes and then this is the jet unit flame blower unit so the air gets blown from here there's the two electrodes on top those two bars sticking out the nozzle attachment on the back there, the little brass thing in the middle, and this, the burner assembly I guess you'd call it, and that little shiny silver thing in the centre, that's the jet, and you can just see that tiny pin hole in the middle of it, that's the jet there. So kerosene or heating oil, I think it's kerosene in this one, shoots out of that little tiny hole, and those two spikes that are in front of it there, create an electrical uh, spark and that makes the oil burn it's pretty much as simple as that it just shoots out a jet of oil sparks set it on fire and then the air fan and this little kind of louvered uh, blade duct here causes the air to swirl and it makes the flame shoot outwards so I'm gonna strip this down swap out the jet check the contact distance on those electrodes and fit it all back together again. It's a real awful machine because it's up by the coast on the west of Ireland and it sits out inside this galvanized box but it still sits out for the last 20 years and every screw in it is rusty and stuck and a whole lot so taking it apart was a bit of a nightmare but I'm at the point where we're putting it back together so I'm happy enough with that. So this is what a new jet looks like been told not to touch it with my fingers and to fit it using the plastic cap which I will do um, but I'll break down the old unit and, and fit that so this one was held on to this body over here with these two screws and these had two M6 threaded allen head nuts on it allen head bolts so that you un unscrew those and you can get access to unscrew the oil pipe connector on the back then you have this thing off in your hand and it had a screw on each side here and here which were a bit mangled from a previous I don't know I don't know who did it because it hasn't been me in the last 10 years but I cut a line through the screw head with a hacksaw and then I was able to get a purchase on it and unscrew that and then very gently working my way tapping this with a hammer the whole way around I managed to pop it off and now it's free like that. So this is what's inside. That's the nozzle, the silver thing. 
and those are the electrodes there. So to get this off, I'm supposed to do it with two spanners, but I've already loosened the silver head. And I don't mind touching it because this one's going in the scrap. I think this was the wrong nozzle for the machine anyways. That's the one that's meant to be, 0.660S. And what was in it was 0.55, so it's not a million miles away, that's the flow in gallons per hour, American gallons, I think. And then on this side, or one of these sides, it says, uh, I think it's 80 degrees, so it would have a different angle of spray, which is incorrect, I suppose. We'll, we'll swap it out for the right one. So it's just a little plug on top. It should be a matter of just hopping it over. I guess I've got to move the electrodes first. They're clamped on with a screw here, hopefully. Yeah, that's nice and free, which is good. So they'll slide back or slide off completely. And then this should just screw in there. <laughs> Doesn't really want to. So how am I supposed to do that without touching it? not even started to thread in. Apparently they told me something about the oils in your hands isn't good for this, so I don't really know if I believe that. Especially haven't seen what was in it before. But just very gently, it's gone in threaded in now. It's threading an okay fit. So, put one spanner down below, get another spanner up here, just nip it up tight. And then slide these electrodes back on without touching that nozzle. So according to the manual that I found on the internet, they should be 4mm apart. That's from here to here, the gap between them. And this way they should be 3mm forward of the fr front face of the nozzle. So, somehow, let's check this. I'm guessing you just bend them. You find you break the ceramic and you're no further forward. Yeah, it looks like four mil to me. And then three mil forward. Well, it's way too far forward at the moment. It'll be tougher to measure, but. If the gap is four mil, then I would imagine something like that. Let's clamp that up and see. What I'm doing there is holding it like that and it's difficult to line up. I think it's not far forward enough. The, the, the actual adjustment is between three and three and a half mil. Go forward a tiny, tiny smidge, half a mil, and I'll call that right. Better ruler would be good here, but well, I don't have it, so. I think it's closer to 4 mil there, so I'm going to come back a little bit. Let's tighten it up, and let's check again. I'm using this end, it looks like 3 mil there to me, so I'm happy enough with that. Not the most accurate, obviously. Right, let's get this thing back on. It fits in here. Two holes line up. couple of screws to put in then. So these are the old screws. That's the mashed up head of one of them, which you don't really want to reuse, but I could. And that's the new one, which may or may not fit. So start with the one that will fit. And that screw sticks out on the inside there, so I'm not too worried about the other one sticking out on the inside. I'm more worried about it just not going in enough to let me slide the unit in. Without the washer on it, it does go in almost flush, so I'm not too worried about that. The seal goes in there, so I guess that's okay. Yeah, that feels about right.
the way I'm getting in at this is because to get that metal cone off wasn't possible at the at the start for me because everything was seized up and the little screws tightened up the little screws that hold it in were sheared off and everything else so for me to get that to go to get that cone off just wasn't possible I want to get this o-ring back in and then line all these up get these new allen screws in feels like we've got one and two it's not really possible to compare them to what they were like before because they were seized so finger tight or well not finger tight tightened up with an allen key so you can see in there that new jet now this whole thing swivels around hopefully will fit into that hole there and then be held on with this one nut up on top which I think is bizarre had an o-ring kind of in here and that was this shape and broken and missing that section so I got this stuff which is o-ring material but not a complete o-ring so PTFE is gas tape by the thickness of it, I would judge. Homemade o rings. Homemade PTFE fittings. What a world, eh? So, before that goes anywhere, let's just get it pushed in. And get that nut tightened up on it. Quite tight at that, you know. It's got a seal in it now. I'm gonna start it up. So I can hear the fan going. The pump has pulled something up into there already and over the other side I can feel the heat blowing off it's difficult because there's the cowlings have broken off you can see them there but there's a lot of heat blowing down there so I have a feeling that's working put that thermostat back to 75 in the middle and we'll see what the heat is like inside later on so it's been working away merrily now for about 10 or 15 minutes. The radiators inside are getting warm. There's very little to it other than that. Very little to see. You can feel a lot of heat blowing out down that chimney. Over this end anyways. I'm going to put it all back together and enjoy the heat for another bit longer.